Hey YouTube, it's Demetri, and today we're gonna to talk quickly about the Trump H-1B $100,000 per year ridiculousness that's going on here. And let me just weigh in a little bit on where I see the quant finance industry. I will have a much longer video on my paid paywall channel on YouTube here if you're curious and me rambling about academic institutions, um, the issues with tech and why tech kind of deserves what they have coming with H-1Bs and a bunch of other things. But what's gonna happen with quant finance, you really only have three options that we could do here. One, we could just say, let's just pay the extra $100,000 for every employee coming through the door. But the issue with that is, is that the stock market, the banks, um, anywhere in finance that's using quantitative finance staffs and employees, the profit margins are extraordinarily thin. We're not going to have a lot of room to be able to pay an extra $100,000 per employee here. The second option here is we could just hire those that are, you know, U.S. citizens. So it could be American internationally born parents, but, you know, they have green cards or something here. Hire those that are going to be U.S. citizens and only hire those. The issue with that is that's not very realistic because you have a quant finance pool of people that go through the graduate programs and quantitative finance, applied math, statistics, PhDs, and all that. Again, real quants are building models um, and doing model validation and even all kind of include quant devs a little doing implementation of, um, again, software, but also mathematics and hardware applications within this space here. Those doing trading, those doing simple analytics. You're not a quant. I'm not, I'm not discussing your your area of this. But what we're gonna end up having here is that we're gonna have this pool of people that are graduating here with degrees, but if we have that pool, it's going to narrow down. You're not gonna have enough applicants to fill even the most competitive, high paying jobs across the industry. Um, there will be an imbalance here where the demand is staying constant. Um, the supply has been way too large, but as the supply is dropping, 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 if we only hired those with green cards or US citizens, we're gonna have a shortage. There's not enough people to go around, so wages would have to go up. Um, firms will have to drop out of the marketplace as well. That's a possibility of some of the impact that will happen with this. But again, that's not really feasible. We don't have enough people to go around, so that's gonna create an issue. The third, which I think is the most likely scenario, is corporations are going to have to do the educational training themselves to help improve talent. So when we go out and we find other degrees that are not quantitative finance, so applied math, statistics, econometrics, uh, even computer science and some other areas, when you bring them in, we're going to have to train them more so. It's going to take more time and money. It is going to be cheaper though to train them internally or pay some, for some other sorts of training and education than it is to pay $100,000 to get an international talent that is basically already trained, has already bore the cost of the education themselves. Now we're gonna pass that educational expense onto the corporations. Corporations are not going to pay the $100,000 that you charge for a quantitative finance master's or PhD here. So if not, you could just go out and get the H1B process. It would be cheaper though, because you could pay the $100,000 for tuition one time to train someone locally. So that's an option here. But I think firms are gonna to have to opt to do more of the training here. Now, I hope the industry will put more pressure on the academic institutions as well. I can tell you the academic institutions have been far too lazy, as I mentioned in the last video, and they just went out to China and India predominantly, uh, and those countries see a nice six-figure salary path with good benefits and amazing opportunity here in the United States, and so they've flooded into the quant finance markets, rightfully so. Uh, it's a great opportunity. You should get in here and do this. Now, the universities did not go to a bunch of you know, lesser known US institutions, recruiting in the math, the stats, the econometrics departments, the finance departments, trying to find top talent to bring into their funnels and then job place them. They have not done that. It's expensive and it costs time and money. So it makes sense they did the cheaper route of just letting all the applications roll in from internationally. Now this has changed. Uh, I think the real issue we're gonna see is education, education, education. How do we train US talent, US-based talent better? How do we get them in the right positions? The way we're gonna do that is either train them internally or lean on the university systems. The university systems, I think you're gonna see a huge fallout in many, many programs that are gonna just dry up because there's no international applications coming through the door. And only the strong will survive. And that's gonna be those that produce curriculum that is strong and fitting with the industry so they have good job placement. And two, that they can fill the seats in their programs because they go out and find those U.S. students who they have ignored and not really targeted um, over the last 20 years here. And I can tell you that as someone coming from a U.S. institution, um, not very well known, but a 
second largest state institution, Washington State, Washington State University. Um, never heard of quant finance until my very last semester, and they just taught one class and hand waved, and everybody moved on. No universities contacted me. No one had heard of me. So I think we're going to see a large shift to education focus. I'm excited about it because I work in the education space here on YouTube, but I do not see companies paying the $100,000 per candidate. Um, I do not see somehow magically like supply and demand rebalancing and us only picking um, US candidates. There's just not enough of them to go around, um, but we will see a large influx in support here due to this Trump kind of move. Um, again, is he going to scale back the 100000 to something more reasonable? Is it going to be a one-time fee? I don't know. He tends to negotiate and move things around. It depends if the banks and the tech companies get together and come up with some better deal. So anyways, that's what I think is going to happen. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.